special presentation of HBO Sports, the network of champions. Dark is back, coming you to you from Bally's Ballroom in Atlantic City, New Jersey. Tonight, a heavyweight doubleheader. First up, Corey Sanders of South Africa, trying to get more active and into the heavyweight contender picture, takes on Hasim Rahman. Then Oleg Moskayev, half a year removed from his spectacular knockout of Rahman, takes on the equally spectacular Derek Jefferson. Springtime on the boardwalk in Atlantic City. Renewal, revival. This weekend, rain. And tonight, boxing fans file into valleys, hoping to see some heavyweight magic. Will we see the blooming of the next heavyweight hopeful? Or will it be just a night when the pendulum swings back and forth for the heavyweights and everyone here lets it all hang out in pursuit of bigger glory down the road? Hello again, everybody. I'm Jim Lampley. We welcome you to this special edition of HBO's Boxing After Dark, special because the heavyweights always seem to provide excitement on this telecast, and any of the four men you're about to see could emerge within the next couple of years as a potential contender for the heavyweight crown, or at least all four of them think so. Let's see what our HBO boxing analyst Larry Merchant thinks as we go into the two bouts on the card. Larry. The four heavyweights that we're about to see have an aggregate record of 109 wins, only six losses, 84 knockouts. Not bad. Is there a potential future heavyweight champion among them? I'd settle for a challenger. <laughs> There's nothing really cosmic and insignificant about this card, nor do we have a solo concert by a champion. We have four woulda, coulda, shoulda, still mighta heavyweights. And that's a recipe for the meat and potatoes of this game. Competition, risk taking, perhaps, perhaps we'll get some drama as well. Jim, if you like your steak raw and your potatoes mashed, this is your kind of night. Indeed, the heavyweight champion of the world likes Yorkshire pudding, pudding of course, being an Englishman and working with us as our expert commentator on Boxing After Dark is the man who trains heavyweight titleist Lennox Lewis, the legendary manager and trainer out of Detroit, Emmanuel Stewart. Emmanuel, looking at the four guys we're about to watch in the ring, does one of them intrigue you as a potential future challenger to Lennox? Well, the one that intrigues me the most, Jim, is Derek Jefferson. Because of his explosiveness and his style, and the fact that he's never really been beaten, so to say, in his own mind by anyone. He went undefeated in 21 amateur fights and only lost one professional fight, and that was a fight where he really beat himself. So I think he's the most intriguing to me. And we'll see Jefferson later on in the main event when he takes on Oleg Moskayev. It could be a tremendous matchup in terms of action because both fighters hit and get hit. But meanwhile, let's take a look at Hasim the Rock Rachman, who thinks of himself as a potential number one challenger. And indeed, if he had won every fight in which he was leading comfortably on the scorecards, this would be an unbeaten heavyweight. Instead, he's lost twice. Now, just a year and a half ago, he was fighting for a mandatory spot uh, to fight the heavyweight champion. Now he's fighting for survival. Ahead on the cards when he was knocked out by David Tua. Ahead on the cards last November when he was knocked out here in Atlantic City by Oleg Moskayev. Here's a closer look at Hasim Rahman. Has he lost because of stamina problems himself? He's lost both of those fights in late rounds. To get away from that syndrome, he's muscled up with some weight lifting, added seven or eight hard pounds, 
but will it do him any real good? Some of the some of the people in his team don't think so. He has said if he cannot beat Corey Sanders, he will never fight again because that will tell him that he can't be a champion. In July in London, Lennox Lewis is scheduled to defend the heavyweight title against Franz Bota of South Africa. So does that mean that Bota is the best South African heavyweight? Probably not. The title of best South African heavyweight almost certainly should go to this man, Corey Sanders. He's only lost once in his career, but look at the inactivity in which his career has been mired while he's been living way down in South Africa. Uh, he's an outstanding athlete who simply has had a very comfortable life in South Africa, where he makes good money, fights about once a year, uh, goes hunting, plays golf, never fully committed himself to being all that he could be as a fighter. And a closer look at Corey Sanders. Well, we told you he was an athlete, and as Jim put it, he can drive a golf ball 50 yards farther than Tiger Woods. He drives par fours, hits it 375 yards and more, is a two to five handicap. He fought both the four times in the amateurs, beat him every time, stopped him three times. And more of that power when he iced Ice Cole, a really rugged American heavyweight, in the very first round in his last fight. And while you're watching both of our fights tonight, you can lob on to HBO.com slash boxing, where you'll be able to score each round, spend some time chatting with former heavyweight contender Michael Bent, and answer the question, who in your mind can beat Lennox Lewis? We list four choices for you on the website. Tua, Tyson, Vladimir Klitschko, the younger brother, Roy Jones, or another choice open to you is none of the above. Or you can write in whichever heavyweight you think would be capable of beating Lennox Lewis. We'll tally up the results. Meanwhile, tail of the tape for Corey Sanders against Asim Rachman. And you can see that the clock is ticking on Sanders' career at age 34. Rachman still by far the fresher face to the two at 27. Inch and a half height advantage for Sanders. Reach advantage of two pounds or uh, two inches. Plus, he's that rarity, a heavyweight southpaw. And you may remember only one Southpaw has ever won the heavyweight championship. That was Michael Moore. Rules of the bout with our unofficial ringside scorer, Harold Letterman. Jim, the Corey Sanders, Hasim Rahman fight is scheduled for 12 rounds using the unified rules on your screen in addition to the 10-point majority scoring system of Commissioner Larry Hazard. Jim, big controversy at the rules meeting yesterday. Hasim Rahman chose Reyes' gloves. Uh, Corey Sanders refused to fight with Reyes' gloves. Promoter Cedric Kushta had to go to Kansas City to bring in ringside gloves. So Sanders wears ringside 10 outs. Rachman with Reyes 10 outs. Jim. Let's go to ring announcer Michael Buffer for the official introductions. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome to Bally's Park Place Casino Resort here on the Boardwalk in Atlantic City, New Jersey, where tonight Cedric Kushner Promotions presents his heavyweight explosion on HBO Boxing After Dark. Presented in association with your undisputed undefeated king of beers, Budweiser, proud to be your bud. Sanctioned by the New Jersey State Athletic Control Board, Boxing Commissioner Larry Hazard Sr. This first bout is brought to you in association also with Golden Gloves of South Africa. The three judges assigned to ringside scoring the bout will be Glenn Feldman, Eugene Grant, and John Potteray. And when the bell rings, the referee in charge of the action, Ed Cotton. And now from Bally's Park Place of Atlantic City, 12 rounds of boxing for the WBU World Heavyweight Championship. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing black trimmed with silver, his weight 245 pounds, and he stands six feet two and one half inches tall. His professional record, 32 victories, including 26 knockouts with only two losses. From Baltimore, Maryland, ladies and gentlemen, here is the challenger, Hasim the Rock Rockman. And his opponent across the ring, fighting out of the red corner, wearing white and weighing in at 225 pounds. He stands six feet, four inches tall. He brings a professional record consisting of 37 bouts with 36 victories, including 26 knockouts and only one defeat. 
ladies and gentlemen, from Pretoria in the new South Africa, making his fourth title defense, presenting the reigning and defending WBU World Heavyweight Champion, Corey Sanders. All right, boxers, you both received your instructions in the dressing room. Obey my commands, protect yourself with good time. Let's touch gloves, have a good clean fight. Jim, I don't know anybody who even thinks they know what's going to happen in these fights tonight. We're just going to have to wait a few seconds more. Yeah, you're right. There are any number of scenarios you can pick for this fight. Now, Sanders, after having knocked out Al Cole in the first minute and a half of his last fight on February 19th, and with all that inactivity, I expect him to try to start fast, Emmanuel. Well, I definitely think that Sanders is the most skillful and uh, faster between the two fighters. The thing is, a lot of guys who are used to fight in their hometown, home countries, become a little bit uh, unorganized and uncomfortable when they fight in different settings, such as him fight here instead of fighting South Africa. The fight's going to be interesting in more reason than one. First of all, I don't like the extra weight that Hasim has picked up. I think it's not that good for him at his height. And if that be the case, I think the speed factor should be a big factor for him. That's not, that's not, that's not Randy Cotton ruling a slip. Yeah. So, Corey Sanders because, went because, down yes. early. But I think Corey is a very good technical fighter. There's a lot of speed. And if he feels very comfortable and relaxed in this setting right here, he can be very difficult for Hasim. Of course, as you see, Sanders is a southpaw. And you've seen Rachman starting out trying to mount his attack behind the right hand lead. That's a change for him. In the past, Rachman has been effective working off the jab. Now he backs Sanders into a corner and tries his hand at infighting. Well, uh, the fact that Sanders is permitted to fight inside, but he seems to have been in control of everything. I just think the hand speed of Sanders is going to be a big factor. Sanders lands a short left hand, seems to wobble Rachman a bit. Rachman fighting out of the corner. Corey Sanders with his hands down, very relaxed in the early going against Hasim Rachman. You know, we must remember that Rachman's last two major fights, he lost by knockout, and they were, they were really some powerful knockouts. He was hurt very seriously in the tour, and also the fight when he fought when he was knocked out by Oleg Moscow. So, you know, I don't know what effect that may have on him in addition to the extra weight. Yeah, he got launched by a right hand and came all the way through the ring ropes and landed on his head on concrete. You wonder, just the psychological hangover from that experience is a question mark. Could be a big factor. Rockman trying the one-two there. Sanders easily blocking the jab with his right hand. Rockman's going to have to resist the natural instinct to work off the left jab constantly against Sanders. There he goes to the left hook to the body, and Sanders fires a counter in return. Sanders' speed seems to be a big factor in this fight at this point in time. And I think the fact that Rockman seemed to have slowed down even more so. I think the weight that he's gained, which he gained primarily from what I understand from lifting weights, is not healthy that much for his height. Sanders looks a little soft around the belly, particularly compared to Rockman, but there's a hard left hand, and obviously softness around the belly does nothing to slow Corey Sanders. Remarkable hand speed for such a big man. Here, suck it in. Now you got the little first round jitteries out, you know what I mean? Start jamming them twice. Hands up when you jam. All right, let's go to work. How you feel? Go good, 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 good. He's only trying to steer you on shots, that's all. Mm -hmm. Set your mouth. The left hand followed by that right hand by Rachman. Oh. 
Milwaukee Bucks numbers in round number one. Sanders 15 out of 60, Rachman 15 out of 46. Most of the connections were power punches. In previous fights we watched on tape, Corey Sanders' corner, trainer Harold Fulbrecht spoke to him in English. Thus, no Afrikaans interpreter. We were taken by surprise when they spoke Afrikaans in the corner at the end of round one. Rockman has been primarily known throughout his career mostly as a right-hand puncher, which is good when you're fighting the southpaw for Texas because that's your best punch. And if, if he can land his right hand, he can possibly turn the fight around. But the fact that no guy, neither one of them are really effectively working with their jabs too much that are landing, they're just using it as more of a pawn type punch, which means that the speed element is going to be a big factor for Sanders, and the power punch, I think, primarily is going to be going for Rockman. And it's, it's interesting, too, that Rockman has been busier professional than Sanders, which, looking at his record, is really interesting that he has been very inactive. But the amateur career of Sanders was so much more extensive than that of Rockman, which, to my knowledge, didn't have much of an amateur career. And there you see the action as Rockman landed a big right-hand counter after Sanders landed a left hand. Now Sanders trying to fire his left hand through Rockman's guard, and they trade punches in the corner. Corey Sanders looking to hit a double or a triple, or maybe even a home run. Okay. Well, this, this is turning out to be a good fight here. This is only both guys are getting hit. I think Sanders thinks he has Rockman in trouble. Well, I think the fact that Rockman is laying in the ropes and going into a defensive mode is pretty much luring Sanders into believing that he hasn't hurt. But the biggest thing is to me still is the speed and the extra weight that Rockman has picked up, which I don't think is going to help him. And you saw Rockman overcommit on a right hand, and Sanders was able to pop him with a quick left. That drove Rockman back into the ropes. Rockman is having to reach from way back with the right hand, and Corey Sanders is stepping up inside and taking advantage of those counter opportunities. Yes, he is. And at, at this stage here, there it was again. Sanders is, is slowed down his footwork, and he's, his speed is up from his hands, but not from his foot anymore. And as a result, I think this fight's going to turn out to be a slugfest. Punch out, punch out, punch well, out. if Rockman overcommits to one more right hand, and Sanders can <laughs> time the left right, we'll find out if Rock can take his punch. Well, and there it is again, and this time Rockman's in trouble. Sanders pounding the left hand through the guard. Rockman wobbles back into the corner. Round two's about to come to a close. Not a second too soon for Haseem Rockman. This is turning out to be a exciting heavyweight fight. Rockman's new trainer, Adrian Davis, hurling him into the corner. Kick your legs out. Kick your leg back. Give me some water. Give me the grief. Fuck it in. Now this is on your bottom, okay? You keep your hands up. You can only hit you when your hands down. Suck it in. Put your hands down. Suck it in. Give me some water. Give me the water. Give me the mouthpiece. Beautiful. When you can't have fun, Cody, okay? You hit him when he bag. Rockman uh, impressively came back from a short left hook with a right hand there. He is still rather fresh. Remember that when he suffered the knockouts, it was in late rounds where his stamina had been uh, tested. But we're looking at Corey Sanders here, who, is, uh, who loves to go big game hunting. South Africa and he is going good game hunting right here in Atlantic City tonight. Wouldn't it be fascinating to see Rockman fall behind early and win a fight by outlasting his opponent as appears might have to be the case here in round two Corey Sanders was able to get off 76 punches to only 48 for Haseem Rockman. So Sanders has been the more active fighter in the first two rounds. And, and, and also if you notice at the conclusion of a punch, whenever Rockman throws a punch, if he misses it, he falls off balance. Very much because of the excess of weight, I think. And Sanders seems to be a little bit sharp and more twisted with his footwork. Now 
Sanders appears to be trying to get a little bit of rest in the first minute of round three, having thrown nearly 140 punches in the first two rounds, and Rockman has a chance to take advantage and does with a right-hand lead. Rockman is gambling everything on his right-hand lead, because that's, that's, that's his great winner. It has been throughout his career, but particularly in this fight here. He is not concentrating on his left hook or his jab at all. He's depending entirely on one right hand. This is a power punch fight, folks. It's going to be Hasim Rahman's right hand against Corey Sanders' left hand, and somebody's going to win this fight off their back foot. And I think it's going to be pretty certain, too. Body shot by Rahman. It, it seems that Sanders is relaxed, and he's only watching Rahman's right hand. If Rockman would come back with a left hook, I think he would have a lot more going for him. But Sanders is watching only the right hand of Rockman right now. And I think what he's really depending on is making Rockman miss a right hand and then trying to counter with the left. Neither man has gone to the body much. Rockman is obviously thinking about it in this round. Some body punching now. Set up that was it. He made it miss. He made it miss the left, right, right hand, and he counted with the left. Absolutely, he timed it right that time. So there's the first knockdown of the fight as Rockman goes down and complains to referee Eddie Cotton that it shouldn't have been ruled a knockdown. And he is wrong, of course, because the ropes held him up. He'd it was an explosive left hand off the missed right. Now Sanders tries to finish up with 30 seconds to go in the round and goes down himself on a counter right hand. Yeah. He's stunned as much as being hurt because he didn't see the punch. He was in the process of trying to finish off Rockman. I don't know when I've seen a fighter walk to his corner and go down to his knee to rest. Bell sounded too early. Round hasn't ended. Oh, that wasn't the official bell. Somebody else sounded a bell of some sort. Well, that was confusing, but the fighters got through it okay. And what a round. Pretty much as we expected. Now you're you just let it go. Just let it go. Breathe really good. Now once you get your win, suck it in. This guy ain't got it. Soon you hit the hand, you gonna go. Come on, Come suck on. it in. Give him some work on the back of his head. Come on. What do you mean look up for Stan and Trey? It's a bleep. Miles, you keep turning and stay away from his right hand. Watch the left right there, coming in, perfectly timed left hook by Sanders, and the ropes clearly holding him up. Sanders getting cocky here, trying to finish it, leaves himself open, Rockman to his credit, saw it, and shot his right through. So you wonder, both men were down in the third. Go ahead, Larry. Well, you wonder if Sanders has used himself up because of all his activity. He looks a little bit wobbly right at this moment. And you wonder if Sanders suffers from ring rust at this point. Let's all the years of inactivity, so many short fights. And now he catches Rockman again with the left. And Rockman tries to catch him with the right. This is just going to be an old-fashioned slugfest from here on in. And they almost both went down. Yeah, but but Rockman held on to the ropes <laughs> to break his ball. Six. Sanders looking Seven. confused now as he looks at his corner to Harold Bulbrecht. Long way to go in this round. Corey Sanders' hands are down. He may be done in. Rockman is looking for the big right hand. And every time he throws a right hand, Sanders tries to counter with his left. And when Sanders gets caught, it's when he's going in, being aggressive. He never gets hit too much when he's in a counter-punching mode. Sanders with one more glance over to his corner as though there's something that Bullbrecht can tell him that'll help him out of this mess. <laughs> Sanders has been down twice. Rockman's been down once. Well, they've seen a lot of stuff on the boardwalk in Atlantic City. I don't know the last time they saw something like this. I know. Derek Jefferson against Maurice Harris last November 6th. Same kind of fight. Boxing after dark heavyweight fireworks. Sanders looks like he's in another world, but Rockman hasn't been able to take advantage in the last minute. Rockman is looking to throw his right hand and try to hit it, and, and Sanders is trying to make him throw the right hand and trying to counter with the left. 
There it is again. Every time he makes a throw to right, he tries to counter. One body shot, two body shots, three body shots. One of them was low. Sanders looks utterly done in. Loses his footwork for a moment. Sanders has made it known that his second biggest love is golf, and it maybe might become his biggest love after this because it's totally just the opposite of what he's in tonight. <laughs> Trade shots again. Right coming from both of their noses in this fight. Why not? Only now is Corey Sanders beginning to get his legs back from the knockdown early in the round. But I see Rachman was never able to find the right finishing opportunity for two minutes there while Sanders wandered around in a daze. If Rockman would use his jab a little bit more effective, I think he would do a lot better. It would, it would set up better for his right hand. Wild left hand misses by Sanders, and they'll go to another round. There. Right. The boy's being tired. You got him back up. Back up with what? Okay, this do this. One strong jab. We almost One had jab and then a, right hand. a double it's knockdown right hand. in that round. Just watch as Rockman throws the right hand, he catches him, <laughs> but held himself up with that left hand, which is fortunate because it gave him a two point round. I thought that's what might happen in the second fight tonight. I actually said in one of our pre-fight promos on the air that Moskov and Jefferson might knock no, each no. other out. Instead, it was Rockman and Sanders who almost pulled that off. Corey Sanders threw 70 punches around in the first two rounds of this fight. In the last round, by CompuBox numbers, he threw 38. So Sanders has lost his activity level and is now just looking for a one-punch knockout of Rockman. Harold, how do you have it through four? Okay, Jim, interesting scoring. Actually, in rounds two, one, one, Corey Sanders, but in points, it's all even. The first two rounds, like you said, Corey Sanders wins 10 to 9. The third round, they each scored a knockdown. You really have to score it even 10 to 10. And the fourth round, Rock wins 10 to 8 because of the clean knockdown. 38, 38, even. I think Rockman's got a chance to win a boxing match if he can pull his act together and just go from here working with the right hand. Well, it's clear that Sanders is trying to get his second or third wind here. And Rockman doesn't seem capable of putting the pressure on him. Yeah. At, at this stage right here, Rockman should really step up the pressure a lot more. How do you so, explain what Rockman did in the last two minutes of the preceding round down here? Well, basically, it just, it's a gambling fight to win in the fight. And they're both just gambling. One is shooting the right hand lead, and the other is waiting to counter punch over the right. But it's, if you notice, Sanders threw a few pesky right jabs that seem to have been effective. But if he doesn't continue to do that, Rockman's going to keep walking straight into him. He needs to keep working his right jab a little bit more to keep him at a distance right there and to set him up for his left. But Rockman seems to have gotten his confidence back together, seems to be very comfortable in, in the setting right now. But what bothers me is the fact that he's doing the same thing over and over, strictly trying to throw right here. is a totally arm-weary round for both fighters. Neither man has landed anything of significance here. Pesky jabs, as you call them, Emmanuel. The best that Corey Sanders can offer. He's waiting for Rockman to throw another right hand, get ready to drop the left on him, and Rockman's looking for the spot to throw the right hand. They're not going to get it. A fan who boos this fight ought to be throttled. 
They've earned a break. That was a good jab by Rockman. Well, call it the fifth inning stretch, if you like. Tune in July 17 as HBO Sports presents our next Sports of the 20th Century documentary when it was a game three. Once again in our award-winning series, viewers will be taken back to an era when fans had special bonds with their heroes. The 1960s were a time of turbulent change, but throughout the decade, names like Clemente, Gibson, Mays, Mantle, and Aaron still meant greatness when it was a game three with its exclusive home movies premiering in July on HBO. Just doing this now. Back him up, feed him back. And look, every time somebody right, put the hands up. I breathe in good, man. He's loafing the wall, I see that's just, don't make a move. You make me get this grease in it. Don't move. All right. Your title. Let's go. Round five, totally unlike any of its predecessors, all of the four preceding rounds dominated by power punches. In round five, Rockman threw 21 jabs and landed eight. And Sanders also connected on, actually connected on nine jabs. So both fighters got whatever offense they got in the fifth round from the jab, and it was precious little. Let's see who gets the second win first. Both, both guys seem to be mentally alert, though, and seem to be trying to sort things out, so to say. I think the jab is becoming more of a factor as the fighters move on. And once again, maybe they're rested up, they're ready to resume where they left off a couple of rounds ago. Rockman lands a straight left hand. Sanders looks fresh enough to counter with the left. Rockman is more effective when they get inside. And this time, Sanders takes the right hand lead, flush on the jaw. Sanders got a pretty good, he's been hit with some good right hand. I think the knockdowns when he got knocked down was mainly when he was in the process of punching and wasn't expecting punches at the time. But he seemed to have a pretty good chin, but the fight is up for grabs. Whoever could mount a, a good aggressive attack but took him behind a jab right now to take control of the fight. Same again. Another right. counter left hand by Sanders. getting more and more pesky with that jab now trying yeah. to set up his left hand and he lands yeah. two more left crosses on Rockman. This is the third. Sanders has a tendency to get square with his balance once he gets into an exchange. Go to corner. Who's mouth? You got the mouthpiece? I see Rockman losing the mouthpiece. It's right in front of New Jersey State Athletic Commission no, uh, Chairman Larry Hazard. No, Sanders. Sanders lost Sanders mouthpiece. mouthpiece, yeah, okay. Rockman has one of those clear mouthpieces, which you, looks like it's nothing in his mouth, but it's a clear mouthpiece. You heard Eddie Cotton asking Rockman if it was his mouthpiece, and you're right. Turns out to be Sanders' mouthpiece instead. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Rockman going to the body with the right hand. I like that idea. This fight, incidentally, is scheduled for 12 rounds because Corey Sanders owns an off-brand off, off heavyweight title belt. Let's go, get out. It's not even an off-brand. It's not even an off-off-brand. Hard right hand by Rockman. Sanders is taking that punch now. Stop punching, stop punching. Step back. Both guys, strange enough, seem to have uh, rejuvenated themselves, at least mentally. I'm looking at both of them's eyes. They seem to be very clear. They're very much aware of everything that's going on. Stop punching, stop punching. And stop the on. biggest problem I see that Sanders has is his balance. After he throws a punch, he often gets fans himself squared with his feet, so therefore he gets knocked down very I don't see his hand speed anymore, man. No, no more hand speed. But nevertheless, the pesky jab of his is still beginning to be a big factor, particularly if he keeps it up. That was a big round for Rockman. And still to come, the other heavyweight battle, the one we thought would really provide the fireworks, and maybe it will. Derek Jefferson against Oleg Moskev. Moskev, last November, was trailing Rachman on all cards when he knocked him through the ropes. 
here in Atlantic City. Spin him around, suck it in deep. Get your hands down, Rock. We relax, baby. He's running from you, Rock. Can't you see it? Press it look. Left foot. Keep back the back with the hands up. Do like this. He can't get nothing. And you jam. All right. All right. He's good. All right. Just step it up a minute. All right. There you see in the back of the arena here is Corey Sanders' wife, a three-year-old daughter who is celebrating her third birthday tonight. A few rounds ago, they were sitting ringside, but uh, Mrs. Sanders decided that this is, may not be the kind of thing her daughter would want to see. Good choice. Interesting fight halfway through. Harold Letterman's card even. Copy box numbers fairly even. Sanders 110 out of 302. Rockman 113 out of 277. Rockman landing slightly fewer power punches. Sanders uses the jab more than Rockman does. When they both exchange their power punches at the same time, meaning Rockman throws a right hand, Sanders throws a left, Rockman seems to have the advantage. He seems to get his right hand in a little bit faster. But when, when Sanders is effective, it's after he lets Rockman miss. But when they shoot at the same time, Rockman seems to come in a little bit better. His punch seems to be a little bit more to the inside. But the big difference would be still if Rockman would do this left jab a lot more. Sanders also seems to be strictly a body, I mean, strictly a head puncher. Uh, oh, that's he doesn't work to the body at all. Doesn't punch to the body at all. And Oleg no, 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 Moskov no, no, was saying to us yesterday no. that he felt the importance of working in American gyms was that you learn the left hook, and you learn to use body punches. And you learn to use body punches. In most of the countries, even though South Africa is not Europe, they still primarily concentrate on head punches. Straight right hand by Rockman, right on the buck. And a right, and a left, and a big rally. And Sanders tries to hold on. And Rockman just pounding away. Sanders covering up, covering up, covering up. Rockman just punching. Eddie Cotton's gonna stop it. Yes. Corey Sanders not yes. defending himself. And that's how the same Rockman punches him right out of the division. Punched him right out. He should have grabbed the man and tied him up. When you're hurt like that, grab the thing that's punching and beating you up. Grab the arms and tie the arms up. Well, look, but, but, but he was hit by about 15 to 17 straight punches. Unanswered. And early on, he, he seemed dazed. Just trying to survive the onslaught, but not doing anything to get out of the way. Well, the referee had no choice. When you're getting it that much, and you're not returning any punches, he has to stop the fight. Gentlemen, it appeared that once Corey Sanders was unable to get the early knockout against Hasim Rachman, it became a matter of time, and whether Rachman would destroy himself or take advantage of the opportunity in front of him. Instead, he took advantage. He took advantage of it, and in fact, he fought as if he wanted to win a little bit more than Sanders going down the stretch. The fight was up in there. 33 wins now against only two losses for Rockman. He takes a big step toward reviving his status as a contender in the division. And Corey Sanders, in all likelihood, will go back to South Africa without ever getting a shot at one of the top heavyweights of his time, Lennox Lewis or Mike Tyson or Evander Holyfield. Sanders will console himself with having won a minor league title and having had a big record, particularly when fighting at home in South Africa. And here's another replay, and Emmanuel Sanders just never tried to hold on. No, he never tried to hold on, you know. And, you, and when you're hurt like that, you can't see punches that good. The best thing to do is to grab the guy and grab the arms that's beating on you. But in his case, probably not experienced at being hurt like that before. He didn't know what to do because originally he wasn't hurt to the degree where he could not have survived probably. But right now, at this point in time, when you're hurt like that, even punches that's landed on the side of your head on the gloves, they still vibrate through and they cause a lot of damage. Sanders' only previous loss was a knockout by Nate Tubbs way back in 1994. It's been six years since he lost a fight. Almost six years to the day, in fact, because that was May 21 of 94. This loss probably seals his fate. As a marginal heavyweight contender, 
who was discussed in relation to a lot of big fights and written about in relation to a lot of big fights through the 90s, but never really got there. Yes, well, I think right now at this point in time in his career, he'll have to be resigned to the fact that he was a WBU champion and have to accept that, and that's going to be his biggest claim to fame. And maybe he I can get that handicap yeah. back down to two. There's his wife yeah. and daughter. Let's go to Michael Buffer for the official particulars on the night. Ladies and gentlemen, part one of the Cedric Kushner heavyweight explosion on HBO Boxing After Dark comes to an end at one minute, 50 seconds of round number seven. The winner by knockout victory and new WBU World Heavyweight Champion, Haseem Barak Rachman. Final punch to add numbers. Haseem Rachman said that if he couldn't beat Corey Sanders, he would give up trying to become heavyweight champion of the world. So Rachman will continue his pursuit of a potential title, landing 150 total punches to 118 for Sanders, throwing more, connecting at a higher percentage, rallying in the last couple of rounds of the fight, and eventually putting Sanders away after Sanders seemingly totally ran out of petrol. And power punches. Uh, as I said, Sanders is the only man who threw jabs, and Rachman landed 37 punches to only eight for Sanders in that last round, so the numbers bulged as the result of the Rachman rally. Larry Merchant standing by with the winner. Uh, thank you, Jim. Congratulations, Rock. Uh, thank you, Mr. Merchant. You, you had a, a rocky beginning to this fight. How did you fight your way out of it? Well, that's smooth sailing from the end of my last fight. What are you talking about, Rock? <laughs> First of all, I'd like to say a lot of God is the greatest. No, there's no strength, no power except with God. And uh, God gave me the strength to do that. And I love you, Hassem, Jerry, and Sharif, and the member. All right, go ahead. <laughs> All right, you said before the fight that if you couldn't beat Corey Sanders, it meant you, it you would never put on the gloves again. I uh, absolutely meant it. And was, was that the intense motivation you had in there, even while you were getting strafed by him in the first couple of rounds? Man. I, was, I felt like I was giving as good as I was taking. He would land one, but he wasn't landing combinations. You understand? Because I kept my head moving a little better. And I would also stun him occasionally with a good shot and make him back up and retreat. The man come all the way over here. He talked trash to me yesterday at the um, glove meeting, telling me he's the champion. I wear what gloves he wear. And, you know, he made it a little personal, a little more personal than it had to be. So I, he had to get dealt with. So we will see you again in the ring. Well, most definitely. I'd like to fight the winner of this next upcoming fight. Um, I'm, I'm J.R. Jefferson, my man, but if he give it a mask, yeah, if I got, I got, me and Jefferson got to get it on. All right, thank you very make much. That, make that fight, man. Congra congratulations, Rock. I, I wish I had the power to do so. <laughs> Jim. All right, Rockman doing a little matchmaking there in the ring. The judges saw it all the same way. Rockman was leading 58 55 on the master scorecard at the time of the knockout. Emmanuel, the big question coming into the fight was could Rock exorcise the demons from his two late round knockouts against Tua and Moskayev. How much will this help in getting rid of the psychological hangover from the two losses? I think tonight that Rockman became a really seasoned fighter, so to say. I think he was in a tough fight that he survived and came back and won. I think he became a veteran fighter tonight, and I think it's going to help him going down the stretch. All right, so we'll see if Hasim Rockman can position himself for a shot at Emmanuel's man, Lennox Lewis, the heavyweight champion of the world. But when we come back, we'll be giving you the second of our two main events, the live battle between Oleg Moskayev, the Russian from Kazakhstan, and Derek Jefferson out of Detroit. Right now, let's look ahead to some upcoming programs on HBO. Mark your calendars for these upcoming programs on HBO. June 10th, it's the second installment of HBO's new boxing series, KO Nation. This month's show will come to you from Detroit, where junior lightweight champion Asselino Freitas will take on number one contender Lemuel Nelson. HBO, the heart and soul of boxing. If you missed the premiere, catch a replay of this month's Real Sports with Bryant Gumbel. Among the stories, a look at the Philadelphia Flyers coach Roger Nielsen fighting bone marrow cancer. Also, lesbians' interest in women's golf and how the LPGA and other sports are dealing with their newest fans. Real Sports, where nothing is out of bounds. 
And July 17, HBO's documentary series, Sports of the 20th Century, presents When It Was a Game 3. Nine years ago, When It Was a Game brought sports fans color home movies interwoven with stories of when baseball truly was a game. This episode deals with the 60s, the decade of the end of innocence for baseball and for America. The boardwalk in Atlantic City, a rainy place this weekend. A great time to cast out some fish nets and take advantage of the early summer harvest off the shores of New Jersey. Or maybe even a better time to slip into something more comfortable and stay inside for hard-punching boxing action.